Welcome to the 2024 CNA Practice Test. This test will have 60 questions with explained answers that will help you prepare for the test. Be sure to resuscitate the like button by turning it white. Question 1. The CNA is caring for a client who is experiencing an infection with Clostridium difficile, C. diff. Which of the following should be used when caring for this client? A. Gown and gloves. B. Gown, gloves, and N95 respirator. C. Gown, gloves, surgical mask, and face shield. D. Gloves and surgical mask. The correct answer is A. Gown and gloves. C. diff is spread through contact with infected feces. A gown and gloves should be utilized when caring for this client. Question 2. The CNA is providing a back rub to a client as part of evening care. Which of the following should be included in the correct technique for this intervention? A. Use deep short strokes. B. Heat the lotion or oil until it is hot. C. Use a light circular motion on skin over bony prominences. D. Chill the lotion, oil in the freezer. The correct answer is C. Use a light circular motion on skin over bony prominences. Skin over bony prominences requires special attention to prevent injury. Question 3. The CNA is assisting a client when a red rash is noted on their groin area. What should the CNA do? A. Apply a cornstarch powder. B. Apply a moisturizing skin lotion. C. Ask the family what they would like applied to the rash. D. Notify the nurse. The correct answer is D. Notify the nurse. This rash should be assessed prior to application of any powders, lotions, or treatments. The nurse should be notified. Question 4. The CNA is assisting a client to shower. Which of the following should be completed prior to bringing the client into the shower? A. Test the water temperature. B. Apply skin lotion to the client's heels and bottoms of feet to soften calluses. C. Have the client take off their clothes and wrap them in a blanket for the trip down the unit hallway. D. Turn the water to the hottest setting. The correct answer is A. Test the water temperature. Water temperature should be tested prior to the client entering the shower. Water that is too hot may present a safety hazard and burn the client. Water that is too cold may be uncomfortable. Putting lotion on the bottom of feet prior to shower entry can present a fall risk. Client privacy should be maintained prior to entering the shower. Question 5. Upon entering a room, the CNA finds a client who is not responsive. What should the CNA do next? A. Telephone the family contact. B. Close the curtain around the bed to maintain privacy. C. Call for help. D. Page the doctor on call. The correct answer is C. Call for help. Assistance should be summoned immediately when a client is discovered to be unresponsive. Question 6. The CNA is caring for a client who is on precautions for methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, MRSA. Which of the following precautions should the CNA utilize? A. Droplet precautions. B. Neutropenic precautions. C. Contact precautions. D. Respiratory precautions. The correct answer is C. Contact precautions. MRSA transmission is prevented through the use of contact precautions. Question 7. The CNA can promote autonomy and self-image of the client through which of the following interventions? A. Asking the client how they would like their hair styled. B. Select the style you feel look best on the client. C. Styling the client's hair in a manner that is quickest. D. Inform the client they may only have their hair brushed when the beauty salon is open. The correct answer is A. Asking the client how they would like their hair styled. Client autonomy and self-image is promoted when clients are allowed to select their preferences of hairstyle. Styling which is quickest may not be in the manner preferred by the client. Question 8. The care plan for a client indicates they should be repositioned every two hours when in bed. Which of the following is the rationale for this nursing intervention? 
A. Increase client comfort. B. Provide the opportunity to check in with the client. C. Decrease fall risk. D. Prevent skin breakdown. The correct answer is D. Prevent skin breakdown. Frequent turning and repositioning when in bed for prolonged periods will decrease risk for skin breakdown due to pressure. Question 9. An immobile client requires transfer from a chair to their bed. Which of the following should the CNA utilize to transfer this client? A. Gate belt. B. Physical assist of one. C. Contact guard assist. D. Mechanical lift. The correct answer is D. Mechanical lift. Clients who are immobile require the assistance of a mechanical lift to promote safety. Question 10. You are assisting a new client to reposition from bed to chair. You have not previously assisted this client and are uncertain regarding their need for assistance to complete the transfer process. Which of the following should be done to ensure safety of the client and staff? A. Ask an additional staff member to assist. B. Ask the family to assist. C. Use an assist of one and a standard walker. D. Use a mechanical lift. The correct answer is A. Ask an additional staff member to assist. Safety can be enhanced through the presence of an additional staff member. Families should not be asked to transfer clients. Use of a mechanical lift may not be necessary. Question 11. While assisting a client with bathing, the CNA notices an area of redness on the elbow of the client. The area does not turn pink when light pressure is applied. Which of the following should the CNA do next? A. Apply lotion to the area. B. Raise the area on a pillow. C. Lower the area to a dependent position. D. Notify the nurse. The correct answer is D. Notify the nurse. This area requires further assessment, which is the role of the licensed nurse. Therapeutic skin lotions or preparations may be ordered for application, but the area should first be assessed by the nurse. Question 12. Which of the following interventions should the CNA use to promote autonomy for a client regarding sleep and rest? A. Follow the unit, sleep and wake cycle. B. Encourage the client to take frequent naps during the day. C. Ask the client what their preferences are for bedtimes and waking. D. Put the client to bed at the time requested by their family. The correct answer is C. Ask the client what their preferences are for bedtimes and waking. Asking the client what their preferences are for bedtime and waking promotes autonomy in decision-making for the client. Question 13. You need to use a Hoyer lift to transfer a patient. The patient is a two assist. You're in a hurry. You bring the Hoyer lift into the room and the resident asks, are you going to get someone to help you? What should you tell the patient? A. No. I'm in a rush. You will be okay. B. Yes, I will get another CNA to help. Your safety comes first. C. Explain to the patient that you are in a rush, but you will be extremely careful and make sure she isn't hurt. D. Tell the patient that if she thinks she needs two people to transfer her, you will come back later. The correct answer is B. Yes, I will get another CNA to help. Your safety comes first. The patient's safety is first. This answer ensures the patient that her needs and feelings are being acknowledged as well. Question 14. The nurse asked you to take your resident orange juice. Once you get to the kitchen, you can't remember if the nurse asked you to take the resident orange juice or apple juice. You take apple juice to the resident. The nurse gets angry with you and asks, Can't you do anything right? How do you respond? A. I apologize. I forgot what kind of you you asked me to bring. Next time, I will try to remember. Please be kind and remember that we are all human. B. Say nothing. You brought the wrong juice. You were in the wrong. C. Tell the nurse to get the orange juice herself next time so you won't forget again. D. Say nothing. The nurse is probably having a bad day. The correct answer is A. I apologize. I forgot what kind of you you asked me to bring. 
Next time, I will try to remember. Please be kind and remember that we are all human. Acknowledging the fact that you brought the wrong juice to the resident is right. However, the nurse was in the wrong for saying, Can't you get anything right? It is okay to communicate to the nurse that you don't appreciate the way she spoke to you and remind her to be kind. Question 15. You are taking care of a resident who began hospice care last week. Today, she is unable to speak and you are unsure if she can hear. The patient's daughter is at the bedside. How would you enter her room for private care? A. Come in and start performing your care. The patient is near death and can't hear. There's no need to introduce yourself if she cannot hear you. B. The daughter is in the room so you tell the daughter what you're going to do for her mom. C. Let the daughter provide the care. After all, the family members know the residents the best. D. Knock, introduce yourself, and explain to others the daughter and the patient why you are there. Proceed with care to be given. The correct answer is D. Knock, introduce yourself, and explain to others the daughter and the patient why you are there. Proceed with care to be given. Residents should always be treated with respect no matter what stage of life they are in. It is important to knock, introduce yourself, explain why you're there, and acknowledge everyone in the room. Even if a patient is unable to hear, see, or speak, they should be treated like any other patient. Studies show that hearing is one of the last senses that humans lose during the final stages of life. Question 16. You have a resident on day shift that is refusing a shower. He has not had a shower in three days. How would you respond to this resident? A. Tell him he must take a shower so you don't get into trouble for not doing your job. B. Tell him you will call his daughter, his POA, if he does not agree to take a shower. C. Gently force him into the bathroom until he agrees to shower. D. Explain to him that it is his right to not take a shower and that you can try again tomorrow. The correct answer is D. Explain to him that it is his right to not take a shower and that you can try again tomorrow. The patient has a right to not take a shower. Consider why the patient may be refusing. Are they uncomfortable with a female giving them a shower? Does he like his showers in the evening versus the morning? Building rapport with the resident is key. Question 17. A resident that usually loves going to bingo game nights is sitting in her room crying. She states that she does not want to go to bingo tonight. What is your response to her? A. Okay, you don't have to go. Maybe another night. B. Why don't you want to go? All of your friends are there. C. There are going to be lots of fun prizes. You should go. D. It's okay if you don't want to go, but do you want to talk about why you don't want to go to bingo? The correct answer is D. It's okay if you don't want to go, but do you want to talk about why you don't want to go to bingo? Acknowledging the resident's feelings and asking her if she'd like to talk about it is appropriate. All of the other options blow off the resident's feelings and can make her feel like her feelings do not matter. Question 18. The resident's son is concerned that the resident is not receiving proper care at the facility that you work at. What is your response to the resident's son? A. Tell the son that you agree that his dad is certainly not receiving proper care. B. Listen silently and offer support to the son. Explain to him that he is welcome to speak to the administrator if he would like. C. Tell the son that you wouldn't allow your family member to be a resident at this facility. D. Ask the son if there is anywhere else he would like his dad to go. The correct answer is B. Listen silently and offer support to the son. Explain to him that he is welcome to speak to the administrator if he would like. The CNA should never engage in family issues or put down a facility. Explaining to the family that they may speak with the administrator is appropriate. It is best that the CNA always direct the patient-patient's family to upper management when grievances occur. Question 19. You and a co-worker are charting on the computer. 
your coworker gets up and walks away without logging off of the computer. What is this an example of? A. Negligence. B. Defamation. C. HIPAA violation. D. Malpractice. The correct answer is C. HIPAA violation. Anytime you are walking away or leaving the computer, you should log out completely from the computer to protect PHI, protected health information. One can be charged with a HIPAA violation and or terminated from their job for this breach of PHI. Question 20. Who does the nurse aide directly report to? A. The licensed nurse. B. The director of nursing. C. The administrator. D. The CEO of the healthcare facility. The correct answer is A. The licensed nurse. In healthcare facilities, there is a chain of command to follow. The nurse aide reports directly to the licensed nurse whether the licensed nurse is a LPN or RN. If the nurse aide is working with a licensed nurse that is breaking rules or harming patients, it is important that the nurse's aide report that to upper management, like the nursing supervisor or director of nursing. Question 21. You have a patient that has received bad news about her husband. Before reaching out to hold her hand, what should you consider? A. What race the patient is? B. What is the patient's cultural background? C. Whether the patient has psychological health issues? D. Whether the patient is crying or not? The correct answer is B. What is the patient's cultural background? The nurse aide should consider what the patient's cultural background is. Cultures like Western culture uses touch to offer comfort or support. However, some cultures like the Muslim culture finds it offensive to be touched by someone other than family or someone of the opposite sex. The nurse aide should be considerate and conservative when offering support to patients. Question 22. You are feeding a patient with dementia when another patient with dementia makes a sexual pass at the patient you are feeding. What is your response? A. Report it to the charge nurse because a patient with dementia cannot give consent. B. Ask the patient that made the pass not to do it again. C. Allow the patients to engage in conversation because they have a right to fulfill sexual desires. D. Ask the patients to only have this conversation in private and not in the dining area. The correct answer is A. Report it to the charge nurse because a patient with dementia cannot give consent. Patients with dementia can become sexual and make sexual passes at others. Because this patient made a sexual pass at another patient with dementia, the nurse aide should report it to the nurse because the patient with dementia is unable to give consent. The patient making the pass also has dementia and may not understand the nurse aide asking him not to make a sexual pass. Question 23. You witnessed a patient fall and are reporting what happened to the nurse in charge. You should A. State facts only. B. Give your opinion on what may have caused the fall. C. Be sure to chart that the patient had a fall in the patient's chart. D. Call the patient's family to report the fall since you witnessed it. The correct answer is A. State facts only. A fall or incident is never placed on the patient's chart. Instead, an incident report is made and should be sent to administration for the committee to review. The person completing the incident report should only state facts and state them clearly. It is not within the aid's scope of practice to call the family members to report an incident. Question 24. You are working on your unit and the nurse asks you, please take this cup of medication and give it to room 5. What is your next step? A. Take the medication to room 5. B. Tell the nurse that she should give the medication herself. C. Tell the nurse that giving medication is out of your scope of practice and report this to the nursing supervisor. D. Ask the nurse to come watch. You give the medication to room 5. The correct answer is C. Tell the nurse that giving medication is out of your scope of practice and report this to the nursing supervisor. It is out of the nurse aide's scope of practice to give medication. 
you also do not know what medication is in the cup. It is important to let your nursing supervisor know that the nurse has asked you to give medication in case he she is asking other nurse aides to give medication. Question 25. The CNA is assisting a client with lower right-sided weakness to ambulate using a cane. Which of the following techniques should be used? A. Place the cane in their right hand. B. Place the cane in their left hand. C. Place the cane in the client's dominant hand. D. Hand placement isn't a factor as long as the client uses the cane. The correct answer is B. Place the cane in their left hand. Placement of the cane in the client's left hand will assist to provide support for the right lower extremity. Question 26. When should universal precautions be practiced? A. For all client encounters. B. When the client has an open wound. C. When the client has a fever. D. When the client has a cough. The correct answer is A. For all client encounters. Universal precautions should be utilized for all client encounters to promote safety of clients and staff. Question 27. Bed making technique includes eliminating wrinkles in the sheets. The CNA knows this technique assists to A. Prevent pressure sores. B. Ensure the client is warm. C. Minimize the need to remake the bed frequently. D. Minimize the need for additional blankets. The correct answer is A. Prevent pressure sores. Eliminating wrinkles in the bed sheets helps to decrease pressure on the skin. Beds should be remade when soiled or as needed. Question 28. Which of the following demonstrates a CNA intervention to foster client independence? A. Encouraging the client to fully participate in bathing activities as they are able. B. Cutting up a food for the client so they don't have to do it. C. Scheduling mealtimes for the client. D. Selecting clothing you feel looks best on the client. The correct answer is A. Encouraging the client to fully participate in bathing activities as they are able. Fostering independence includes encouraging and allowing the client to participate in as much of their care as they are able. Assistance should be offered and provided for tasks which the client is not able to complete by themselves. Question 29. Care for a Foley catheter should include which of the following? A. Keeping the collection bag above the level of the bladder. B. Cleanse the peri area every other day. C. Keeping the collection bag below the level of the bladder. D. Empty the collection bag only when it is full. The correct answer is C. Keeping the collection bag below the level of the bladder. The Foley collection bag should be kept below the level of the bladder. This prevents backflow of bacteria into the urinary system. Perineal hygiene should be performed frequently in clients utilizing Foley catheters. Collection bags should be emptied according to the nursing care plan schedule, which may be more frequently than when it is full. Question 30. A patient consumes 8 ounces of ice chips. What amount should be recorded on the intake log? A. 8 ml. B. 240 ml, C, 120 ml, D, 180 ml. The correct answer is C, 120 ml. Ice volume is recorded as one half of the amount. Eight ounces of ice chips is equivalent to four ounces of water. Four ounces times 30 ml. Ounce equals 120 ml. Question 31. Seniors like to make their own decisions and can do so unless they are cognitively declining. The certified nursing assistant is aware that one of the best ways to respect the resident's decisions is to do what? A. Suggest legal counsel. B. Actively listen to the resident. C. Ask them to speak with the social worker. D. Encourage them to listen to their family. The correct answer is B. Actively listen to the resident. The CNA can demonstrate value and respect for the resident's decisions by actively listening to their wants and needs. The CNA should never suggest legal counsel. The CNA can suggest that the resident speak with the social worker or the family members if the situation warrants, but that may not always be necessary. Question 32. 
You have a patient who has just received news that her best friend of 60 years has passed. How would you assist her in the grieving process? A. Encourage her to go to bingo to get her mind off of her friend. B. Talk to the patient about a death you experienced in your life. C. Ask the patient if she would like you to sit and talk about her experience. D. Explain to the patient that the patient is in a better place and no longer suffering. The correct answer is C. Ask the patient if she would like you to sit and talk about her experience. The CNA should ask the patient if she would like you to sit with her. If she agrees, the CNA should actively listen and provide comfort to the patient. It is important not to use the other options because the patient can feel like you are discounting their feelings. Question 33. The certified nursing assistant, CNA, is aware that the long-term care resident may resort to manipulation of the staff. The CNA recognizes manipulation as what behavior? A. Constant complaints of pain or discomfort each time a new staff member is on their unit. B. Lying to the other residents on their unit. C. Refusal to take medications. D. Sitting alone for all meals. The correct answer is A. Constant complaints of pain or discomfort each time a new staff member is on their unit. The resident may complain of pain or discomfort to a new staff member in order to receive medications. This is a form of manipulating an unsuspecting nurse. Lying, refusing medication, or sitting alone are not forms of manipulation by the resident. Question 34. You have a patient who is yelling, upset, and crying due to a complaint. How should you approach this matter? A. Touch the patient's hands and ask her to calm down. B. Report this to your charge nurse so the nurse can handle it. C. Use a calm, reassuring tone to speak to the patient. D. Walk away from the patient to let her calm down. The correct answer is C. Use a calm, reassuring tone to speak to the patient. As the CNA, you should attempt to show the patient that their concern is important. Using a calm voice is a positive response and is more likely to calm the patient. Question 35. It is estimated that delirium is noted in at least 40% of nursing home residents in the United States. The certified nursing assistant, CNA, is aware the resident with delirium might suffer from what symptom? A. Resident becomes tearful and upset at small changes in schedule. B. Resident see or hears things that other residents and staff do not. C. Resident becomes weaker and experiences episodes of incontinence. D. Residents loses the ability to speak. The correct answer is B. Residents see or hears things that other residents and staff do not. Residents suffering from delirium may see or hear things that others do not or fail to recognize those around them. They do not lose the ability to speak or become any weaker because of the delirium. Question 36. The certified nursing assistant is aware that the resident sleeping more than usual, lack of interest in once-loved activities, and withdrawal from family and friends can be a sign of what condition? A. Anger. B. Depression. C. Frustration with staff. D. Alzheimer's disease. The correct answer is B. Depression. Excessive sleeping lack of interest in previous activities, and withdrawal from family and friends are all symptoms of depression. Anger and frustration with staff would be signs of unhappiness with the situation. Alzheimer's disease usually causes more cognitive effects, such as memory loss and forgetfulness. Question 37. A patient has fallen and broken his foot. The foot is now in a cast. What is important to assess during your shift? A color and temperature of the toes, b, color and temperature of the knee above the cast, c, pulse behind the knee, d, pulse in the groin. The correct answer is a, color and temperature of the toes. Assessing the color and temperature of the toes can help determine if the cast is too tight. The toes should be warm and pink. Any change in color or temperature should be reported to the charge nurse. 
Question 38. You have a patient that has incontinence who wears briefs. What is necessary for patients with stress incontinence? A. A Foley catheter to keep the skin dry. B. Frequent toileting breaks throughout the day. C. Less fluids to keep them from urinating often. D. Diuretics to help keep their bladder empty. The correct answer is B. Frequent toileting breaks throughout the day. It is important to assist patients with incontinence to the restroom throughout the day so that their bladder isn't getting too full. A Foley catheter significantly increases the risk of a UTI. It is unsafe to withhold fluids from a patient due to incontinence. Diuretics can lead to dehydration and electrolyte imbalances. Question 39. You have a patient that has fallen on the floor. What is the first thing you should do? A. Assess the patient for injuries. B. Leave the patient and go. Tell the charge nurse. C. Help the patient up to a chair as soon as possible. D. Make the patient roll onto their left side. The correct answer is A. Assess the patient for injuries. When a patient falls, the first thing to do is to assess the patient for injuries. The patient should not be left alone. Picking the patient up to put them in a chair would put yourself and the patient at risk for injury. The patient should be asked to lie still while you assess for injuries. Question 40. What is the medical abbreviation for before meals and at bedtime? A. A. C. H. S. B. B. I. D. C. B. M. D. B. M. A. B. The correct answer is A. A. C. H. S. The medical abbreviation for before meals and at bedtime is ACHS. This would be used in the case of a diabetic patient needing POC glucose checks. The patient may have orders for check glucoses before each meal and at bedtime. This would be written glucose checks, ACHS. Question 41. You have a patient on strict dysphagia precautions. The cafeteria sent her up a lunch tray. What item would you question if it arrived on the patient's tray? A regular orange juice, B, mashed potatoes, C, jello, D, applesauce. The correct answer is A, regular orange juice. Typically, when a patient is on strict dysphagia precautions, they will require thickened liquids. The orange juice should be thickened with a thickener in order for the patient to consume it. The CNA nurse should look at the MD orders to determine which consistency the orange juice is to be thickened to, that is honey or nectar. Question 42. You have a patient with dark amber-colored urine. You know this is a sign of what? A. Impending heart attack. B. Dehydration. C. Kidney stone. D. Impending death. The correct answer is B. Dehydration. Amber colored urine is a sign of dehydration. The patient should be encouraged to drink more fluids to ensure the kidneys are flushing out toxins as needed. The older adult should especially be encouraged to drink fluids as they may sometimes forget to drink, causing dehydration and electrolyte imbalances. Question 43. You have a patient that does not drink adequate fluids. The patient is at risk for all of the following except A. Mouth sores. B. Bad breath. C. Skin ulcers. D. Swollen gums. The correct answer is D. Swollen gums. A patient who does not drink adequate fluids is at high risk for dehydration. Patients with dehydration are at risk for mouth sores, bad breath, skin breakdown, and tooth decay. Question 44. You have a patient that only likes to shower once weekly. It is important for you to realize what? A. Your facility has a shower schedule and the patient needs to be educated on her allotted shower time. B. Cultural differences in bath taking is often overlooked by healthcare professionals. C. The patient's family needs to be aware of the patient's refusal to bathe. D. The patient is at high risk for depression if she does not shower more often than once weekly. The correct answer is B. Cultural differences in bath taking is often overlooked by healthcare professionals. As healthcare workers, we often forget that there are cultural differences in things such as bathing. Healthcare professionals see lots of dirty things, so our minds can think dirty a lot. 
However, it is important to remember that there are cultural differences in such things as bathing, and the patient may not feel as though she is dirty. Her culture may not allow her to bathe, but once weekly. It is important to speak to the patient and build a rapport with her to figure out her reasoning behind her bathing beliefs. This way, she does not feel as though you are trying to force her into anything. Question 45. You are assisting a resident in shaving his face. Which of the following is a correct step in shaving the face? A. Shaving upward on the neck. B. When shaving the chin, an upward motion should be used. C. Use long strokes when shaving. D. Rinse the blade every two to three strokes. The correct answer is A. Shaving upward on the neck. When shaving the face, the aide should first wash the face with warm water to soften the hair. After applying shave cream, the aide should use short strokes to shave the face while shaving in the direction of hair growth. The blade should be rinsed between every stroke. Question 46. You have a patient experiencing dysphagia and must be on a dysphagia diet. You are assisting the patient with feeding. What type of diet would you expect this patient to be on? A. Pureed. B. Clear liquid. C. Mechanical soft. D. Regular. The correct answer is C. Mechanical soft. Dysphagia means trouble swallowing. A dysphagia diet should consist of soft and or moist food to help the patient swallow it better. Sometimes patients on a dysphagia diet will also require thickened liquids so that the patient does not choke on thin liquids. Question 47. A patient's care plan states that he is a two-person assist and must use a Hoyer lift. Which transfer are you most likely making with the Hoyer lift? A. From the bedside commode to the chair. B. From the bed to the bathtub. C. From the wheelchair to the shower. D. From the bed to the stationary chair. The correct answer is D. From the bed to the stationary chair. A Hoyer lift is generally used to transfer a patient from the bed to a chair and vice versa. The patient in need of the Hoyer lift is usually immobile. The patient is a two-person assist meaning two persons should assist him while using the Hoyer lift. This ensures the safety of the patient. Question 48. You are assisting a patient with ambulating with a gait belt. The patient is starting to fall. What should you as the aide do? A. Grab the gait belt and slowly lower the patient to the ground, putting most of the weight on your legs. B. Use the gait belt to catch the patient by leaning forward. C. Yell for assistance so someone can help you catch the patient. D. Let the patient fall and assist them up. The correct answer is A. Grab the gait belt and slowly lower the patient to the ground, putting most of the weight on your legs. Using proper body mechanics, you should grab the gait belt and gently lower the patient to the ground. You should use your legs to bear most of the weight so that you do not harm your back. You should never lean forward to try to catch the patient. This can cause you to harm yourself. Question 49. A resident wants a copy of their medical records. The CNA should A. Make a copy of the record and give it to them. B. Inform them that copies cannot be given to residents directly. C. Notify the resident's family about the request. D. Provide the record release forms and advise the supervisor. The correct answer is D. Provide the record release forms and advise the supervisor. Residents have the right to complete information about health status and treatment. There is a procedure for obtaining records which includes release forms. Unless the resident has been declared incompetent, the resident can provide the consent for release. Question 50. A resident prefers to spend time alone. The CNA should A. Check in as often as possible to make sure the resident is okay. B. Encourage the resident to notify staff if anything is needed. C. Notify the resident's family that they don't interact with others. D. Arrange to have other residents join them. The correct answer is B. 
encourage the resident to notify staff if anything is needed. Residents have the right to choose to participate in social, religious, and community activities. Residents have the right to refuse treatments. Effort should be made to allow the resident's preferences if it can be done safely. Question 51. A resident's room is sloppy and the resident won't tidy up. The CNA should A. Clean the room while the resident is at an appointment. B. Insist the resident put all the things away or they will be thrown away. C. Let the resident know that some of the things are a safety hazard and help them relocate the items. D. Notify the resident's power of attorney. The correct answer is C. Let the resident know that some of the things are a safety hazard and help them relocate the items. Residents have the right to keep and use personal belongings. If belongings are moved without the resident's knowledge, it can cause distress and mistrust. Staff do not have the authority to discard residents' belongings. Question 52. Two unmarried residents are cuddling in a common area. The CNA should A. Separate them. B. Escort them to one of the residents' private rooms. C. Notify their families. D. Allow them to enjoy each other's company. The correct answer is D. Allow them to enjoy each other's company. Residents have the right to interact with people in the community. CNAs should report any concerns about a resident's health. CNAs should report any concerns about a resident's safety. Question 53. If a resident prefers to take a bath at night, even though she is scheduled in the morning, the CNA should A. Help the resident as needed to bathe. B. Notify the supervisor about the non-compliant behavior. C. Insist the resident wait until the morning. D. Tell the resident no one can help when the rules are broken. The correct answer is A. Help the resident as needed to bathe. Residents have free choice and participation in planning care and treatment. Residents have the right to refuse medication and treatment. Effort should be made to allow the resident's preferences if it can be done safely. Question 54. If another staff member hides the call bell from a resident who frequently uses it even though nothing is needed, the CNA should A. Be grateful because there is no time to answer the call bell so often. B. Give the resident a fake call bell. C. Tell the resident someone will visit every hour to see if she really needs something. D. Return the call bell within reach of the resident and report the staff member for neglect. The correct answer is D. Return the call bell within reach of the resident and report the staff member for neglect. Residents have the right of freedom from abuse, neglect, or mistreatment. The resident has the right to be safe in their environment. The ability to call for assistance is required for resident safety. Question 55. One factor that can influence the grieving process is the cause of death. What impact can this have on the grieving process? A. The cause of death has no bearing on the grieving process. B. The cause of death brings up bad memories. C. Death often reminds us of our past losses and how that individual passed. D. None of the above. The correct answer is C. Death often reminds us of our past losses and how that individual passed. The cause of death can alter the grieving process as this may bring up past losses and how the individual passed. Sudden death and or specific diseases can cause emotional distress, altering the grieving process. The cause of death can prevent one from preparing for the death. Question 56. Your patient is nearing death and you notice they are grimacing a lot and look as if they are in pain. What can you do to assist this patient and relieve their pain? A. Ask the nurse to administer pain medications. B. Do nothing as they are dying. C. Place pillows around and under the resident. D. Ask the patient what you can do to relieve their pain. The correct answer is A. Ask the nurse to administer pain medications. Although not every individual will experience pain while dying, some do. Care should be geared around relieving their pain and making sure they are as comfortable as possible. 
Placing pillows under the patient is a good way to ensure they are comfortable, however, will not alleviate any pain they are experiencing. Question 57. Empathy is pivotal when caring for residents. What is a good example of empathy? A. Placing yourself in someone else's situation without pity. B. Taking the time to understand what is going with that resident. C. Being aware of what you say and what effect it may have on another individual. D. All the above. The correct answer is D. All the above. All of the above are correct and show empathy. Empathy is showing understanding without pity. Being aware of what we say and how we say things is essential as well and shows empathy towards others. Question 58. A family member calls the office and informs you that the resident's family member passed. How can you best support his family members and the patient? A. Sit with the family and or the resident offering support. B. Do nothing because it is not your family member. C. Just ignore the topic so the resident does not become emotional. D. Ask another staff member to deal with the resident. The correct answer is A. Sit with the family and or the resident offering support. You can respond to the resident's family's emotional needs by offering support and sympathy. Allow the resident and the family member to express themselves. Never ignore the situation or ask someone else to deal with their sadness. As an aid, we have a responsibility to provide comfort and emotional support. Question 59. What is one way you as a caregiver can deal with stress? A. Exercise on a daily basis. B. Talk about the residents in a negative manner. C. Eat more. D. Read more. The correct answer is A. Exercise on a daily basis. Although reading may be a good stress reliever for some, regular exercise is a positive way of dealing with stress. Releasing all those endorphins suppresses stress hormones and improves mood. Question 60. What is one thing you will need when providing post-mortem care? A. Nothing is needed when providing post-mortem care. B. Supplies for a bed bath. C. Towels. D. All the above. The correct answer is B. Supplies for a bed bath. When providing post-mortem care, you will need supplies to wash the resident. You need to wash the resident up. This means cleansing the whole body. Treat them the same as you did before they passed and provide the resident with dignity and respect. Just because they are deceased does not mean we treat them less. Thank you for watching this video and we hope it was helpful. Click the link right here to start your free three-day trial to CNA Premium, which has over 1,000 practice questions that will help you pass your CNA exam on your first try.